For today, we got another piece of Fantex over-engineered treatment. Today, it's going to be about the Fantex Anthu 719 or LOX2. Why do I found two names for that? Anyway, a huge case, an enormous case featuring a ton of little extras, gimmicks, features and everything what you could imagine. Plus, it's really hard to b-roll this thing. Like, this is, this is just too big for, for my setup in, in the back. It's, it's, it's just too much. Okay, so this is the monster of a case. And as there are way too many features to cover, let's just get right into it. The Fantex Anthu 719 full tower case exists in two different colors, a black one and a gray one, which is the one we are looking at right now. As already said, this thing is big, really big. Standing like that, the Anthu 719 measures 240 millimeters in width, 570 in height and 595 in depth. A true freaking monster. But before we can witness what hides inside of this beast, we first need to open that monstrous tempered glass side panel. This however is quite the quest. First we need to remove the top panel by unscrewing the two screws in the back and sliding it backwards and then just lifting it away. From there we can pop out the front panel by sliding it up which immediately reveals the hidden screws that keep the side panel in place. Once the screws are removed we can freely open and close the side panel but don't believe that you must put that screw back in. On the edge of the side panel we will find a little magnet that helps to keep the thing in place for a permanent installation without that screw. The side panel itself is made out of very thick glass and sits on two hinges that allow it to be removed completely by pulling it up. On the edge of the case where the panel comes in contact, Fantex installed a few isolating stripes of foam which simultaneously prevent any sort of hitting damages and seal off the side of the case for both air and noise leakages. Inside the monster we will find an extreme level of compatibility. Mini ITX, MATX, ATX and even EATX by SSIEB standards are possible without the slightest issue. Interestingly though, the design of the motherboard area isn't quite the usual thing. The motherboard is installed on the upper left edge of the case with rubberized cable holes next to it and the normal cutouts above it. The bottom of the case is sticking out significantly however. This random seeming panel is actually the other side of the PSU location. However, due to it sticking out to such a degree, it does kinda look like the motherboard is standing on it, giving it like a, a throne-like design. As we already covered the cable cutouts around the board area, let's see what else Fantex did for your cable management. Additionally to the cutouts we already covered, we got an additional one in the bottom of that throne-like structure. This one comes out in the back of the case where the PSU should be installed. But before getting there, we need to loosen these two thumb screws, which allow to open up that whole area. Additionally, you can also unhook the whole panel and just remove it until you're done working and then put it back in. This quite enormous and separated power supply section is where all of your cable cramming is going to happen. Thankfully, we can just hide the whole thing, which is not an issue, but we can also make use of those pre-installed velcro strips and those potential uh, cable tie holes and whatever else Fantex spread across the whole back of the case. Although you might have thought that this was the case, as it's a really, really extreme Fantex thing to do, those covers here are not cable covers. This time around, nothing to wiggle, nothing to push, there is no holes for cables coming through. Instead, what those actually are, are straight up covers, removable by squeezing their ends in together and then just, you know, push them out in the front. After removing all of them, we can see that these are hiding a bunch of fan spots which can pull or blow air into the back or out on the back through the back panel. So at this point, let's go into the ridiculous amount of fans and, and cooling support that we have in here. Each side of the case comes with a high quality and magnetically removable dust filter. In the front, we have support for up to three 140s or four, yes, four 120 fans. In the back we got the usual 120 or 140 spot and in the top it's either 3 120s or 3 140s. Everything kinda normal except for the, the front but we have even more fans. The bottom bracket is a bit special though. Here we can remove the filter by pulling it on the front 
And then we can also completely remove the bracket by unscrewing that one screw in the back and then just simply lifting it up. Now on here we can mount a total of three 120mm fans and the most right spot we can also go for a 140. And the last spot for our quest over here are the sideways mounted fans. Fully jacked out we are looking at another four 120mm fan spots going from top to bottom. Whew, so let's sum it up. Going all 20 we can squeeze in a total of 15 fans. If however you prefer 140mm we can go with 8 140s and 6 additional 120s. It's, it's, it's completely insane this thing. To help you pull all of this off Fantex added a little fan hub in the back of the case at the very top. Here we can go with five four pin pvm and three three pin headers or how i would say just connect whatever you want because it's, it's going to work anyway to get the hub going we need to connect the four pin header that comes out of it to one of the headers on your motherboard and the sata power cable to you guessed it a sata power cable at this point a short opinion though generally i would have said well, if I can fit 15 fans, then why doesn't the hub have 15 ports? Uh, why breaking my knee before even trying to run? Well, upon thinking a bit, I realized that no fan has a cable long enough to make the route from the very bottom to the very top. So you are going to need to go with extensions anyway inside of this thing. Or you could also potentially go with this, like, like these splitters one, two, three, and then you can, you know, one side is always longer and then you can do something like that. But it's not going to work out of the box if you have normal fans. So no, I believe in this particular case the hub has enough ports due to the case being so freaking enormous that it would just it would just not make any sense. Coming back from that little opinion trip, it's pretty safe to say that this is definitely not a, a mid-range case. No, this is the absolute high end. This is so enormous and so over-engineered to fit in a ridiculous amount of raw cooling power that it's clear that this is solely for the very, very best systems out there. And this also applies for actual CPU cooling. For air coolers, we are looking at up to 195mm high towers. Good luck finding something even remotely as high. For water cooling, things are about to get weird again. In the front, we can go with up to 480 or 420 high radiators. For the top, it's up to 360. Yes, no 140mm based radiators in the top as that might actually create some clearance issues with the motherboard. But you know, you can find it out yourself depending on what thickness you're going for. In the back, it's back to regular 120 or 140. And on the bottom, we are back to regular 360. And to top it all off, we can go with up to 480s on this side one. So to make this kind of clear, we are looking at a dual 480 radiator. And if you are not using like any weird shapes and, and all of that really thick stuff, you could potentially add another two 360s to that. So there is just no other way to describe it apart from completely insane. And, and this is probably the very setup that they are using to keep Chernobyl from melting again. Not, nothing is normal about this thing. But as the video is far from over, we are not done with our normal yet. The next way too compatible section would be storage. In the back of the case we got three of those SSD covers that can be filled. And for reasons absolutely beyond my understanding, the case even got an additional tempered glass side panel that allows you to showcase those three drives. For reasons. I, 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 I don't get it, but okay. From here on, we are required to open that magical Fantex box that comes with the case. In here we will find the usual Fantex grade of goodies, some special covers that are, we are going to talk about later on, a vertical GPU mount, a GPU anti-sag bracket, the, the very handy Fantex toolbox and four of those modular hard drive brackets. Now each of those HED brackets can be used to house either a 3.5 or 2.5 inch drive. And as you might expect, there are a ton of places where we are able to use them. The first spot would be in the back of the case underneath where the GPU is going to be. Here we can use the modularity of those brackets and snap one onto the other one and create a four times stack of them and click the whole thing into place. Now by textbook Fantex states that the maximum amount of hard drives you could put in here is four. The number probably stands for the fact that after the fourth you are probably going to hit the GPU. However, for the folks out there that are going to build the most ridiculous NAS that you are that you are able to do without going for like server-like chassis, 
Um, let's just say that there is nothing stopping you from going all eight in combination with an APU. Um, just kind of make sure to add cable ties because the whole thing tends to be a bit uh, wiggly. The other place where you are able to use those cages on is on the side panel. Here we can create four sets of two time stacks and click them in and tighten them down from the back of the case using two thumb screws. If you would be going by playbook, we would be looking at a total of 12 hard drives and three SSDs or just 15 SSDs in total. Out of the box, only four of those brackets are included. So if you are really planning to do such a insane creation, you will need to get them separately. And you need to keep in mind that if mounted on a side, you will severely cripple the frontal cooling support. Not even talking about the fact that each fan spot that you are using for hard drives is not a, a fan spot anymore. But that's, I mean, you should know that. Now let's get to the RGB and I.O. Of course, there is a RGB. How could they not add some RGB? The right side of the case got probably the cleanest line of FPS increasing light I have ever seen. A similar line can be found on that motherboard throne. Very clean, very good looking, I really like it. And all of that light is being produced by the included ARGB controller that Fantex basically built into every case that they ever created. The cables for that one are coming out in the back of the case. A SATA power to get it going and a 3-pin ARGB to hook everything up to the motherboard in case that you don't want to control it with the case but with your software. If, however, you, wa you want Fantex to take care of it, we can also use either the Fantex proprietary extension cable, which allows you to hook up even more Fantex DRGB devices, or you can use the standard 3-pin and hook up whatever fan and whatever device you want. Like in this scenario, I have all of these light wings funneled through that 3-pin ARGB header going to the controller of Fantex, and I'm not even thinking about going software. It just works like that, and I'm fine with that. The control buttons for that ARGB controller are located right next to the I.O. panel. And all of this is hidden inside this little compartment, which initially might look like it's an ancient DVD drive cover, but don't panic, I panic too. Once you flip it open, it reveals the chunkiest I.O. panel I have ever freaking seen. Here we got two of those DRGB buttons, one for mode and the other one for color, and then we get the usual headphone and mic jack. But we will also get an USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C followed by four USB 3.0s. That's a lot of USB for a case. As the last topic to cover before we get weird, we need to go over the GPU support. Standing like this, we got up to 503 millimeters of space to install whatever GPU you like because I, I'm not aware of any being that long. For this, we can use those nine reattachable PCIe brackets in the back and alternatively, if you are into vertical installations, there are three PCIe brackets available to get you going. In order to use these, we have basically two possibilities. You can get that Fantex vertical kit separately, which would transform the whole area into something that looks like a structure made exactly for that. But you can also just, you know, extend it with uh, the standard PCIe riser cable as I did it here. It, it uh, works perfectly fine like that. Inside the box of goodies, however, Fantax hit two little extras. One being a GPU anti-sag bracket and the other one a plastic vertical GPU mounting piece. The GPU anti-sag bracket is supposed to be used whilst using a GPU in a normal horizontal installation. However, it doesn't work as you might expect. Instead of keeping the GPU at the fan end, basically where you had, would have like the most amount of sag, it is pushing up the PCIe brackets at their end. Now, I will not comment on how well this works yet. Like three Fantex videos ago, I said I didn't believe it works. Fantex said I should try it out before judging and I thought they are right. Therefore, in my working rig, where usually I have this card installed, this 3090 Tough, which is really heavy and really hella big, I'm using it in a normal installation with that bracket and now after two months I still have no sag and I will try to give it another month or two before I draw my own conclusion. But for now it looks uh, uh, surprisingly well that considering my, that my brain doesn't understand why it works. Anyway, at this point, we have all of the, let's say, normal stuff covered. So let's get into the weird stuff, dual system. As it's very often the case with Fantex, the Enthu 719 supports dual stuff. First off, a dual PSU. Right next to that motherboard throne, we have a removable plate. By removing those two screws in the, the central area of it, 
it reveals a secondary power supply position. Now of course this is a hell of a niche thing. First off you will need to use one of those eBay two PSUs to a single power adapter to get both power supplies started up at boot and, and all of that. But I do want to remind you that this M2 is a is a case meant for ultra high-end builds. Let's say some maniac wants to install three 3090 Ti's, you know, after selling the kidney of every family member. Well, that's over 1500 watts from the GPU alone and, and still no motherboard, the CPU, nothing. And at 1500 watts plus probably like 500 more for the CPU that is not, you know, crippling when looking at it, it's, it's kind of easier to just go with two power supplies than to find anything that will push out 2000 watts safely. So in the light that we are now having GPUs that are indeed needing such a tremendous amount of raw electricity, this kind of starts to make sense. And considering how the future, um, yeah, is supposed to look like, power supply manufacturers have to either make a huge step forward or this will become the new norm on, on high-end devices. But that bracket does not only allow you to install two power supplies. If you remove the two leftover screws in the top, we can take away the whole panel and replace it with the included dual system bracket. By using this dual system bracket, we can use that extremely handy motherboard screw adapter that Fantex includes. No, seriously, this thing is really awesome. And we can prepare that motherboard throne to be used to install a secondary system. And this is also the moment where the plastic vertical GPU piece comes into play. Cause instead of being used for the main system, it is supposed to be mounted at the very bottom of the case and combined with a Fantex vertical GPU riser cable in order to create a GPU spot for that secondary system. Now, just as the dual G PSU thing, this is highly niche -y. This is for people that, for example, streamers, that may want to offload the work of, of recording or pushing out the stream to a secondary system. So, you know, they could feed the image from one to the other one and then you have all of your own power to keep playing while the other one is encoding or whatever. This is a really, really specific purpose all of which basically requires really hard workloads and extremely sophisticated hardware. Just like, for example, you will need to get one of those Fantex dual system PSUs just to have two of each, like two 24 pins and so on. Just please don't think you could do splitters. Don't do splitters. A normal PSU is not built to be used with splitters. Don't do that. Anyway, as far as my book goes, this was every feature of that insane Fantex and 719. Now, when I asked for the case, I was expecting something, I don't know, big, maybe even impressive, but I wasn't prepared for this. This thing is enormous. The amount of cooling potential is horrendous, completely insane. And the amount of compatibility is, yeah, well, there is no restriction whatsoever that I was, that I became aware of. I, I can put whatever I want into this thing. But I also need to give a lot of credit for the dual system thing. Instead of forcing you to go with brackets or whatever else, they include basically everything you need with the case. So as long as you don't need a separate PCIe device, which would require that, that one splitter, you can just do it. Let's say you want to have a secondary system as a NAS. Uh, for all of those hard drives in, in front of, in, of the case. You don't need to buy anything extra. Everything comes out of the box. You just need a system with an APU. And that's not something that is very often done in the industry. You usually need to buy a lot separately. Now on the installation, uh, like procedure, I mean, this is an enormous case. We already did a build in here. There was no issue whatsoever. Each time I, I build a system in here and I did multiples, uh, the, the amount of holes for cable is perfectly fine. The space to, to fit everything in here was very fine and the space in the back is more than plenty of whatever I, I tried to do. It, it was more than enough. It was a very, very pleasant experience overall, especially considering the ridiculous system that I built in here. Now on the cooling part, I mean, you saw the amount of fans you can go for. You could argue that the top and the front panel are not the best case scenarios. That would also be true. Mesh would be better. However, I see this more as a performance case, like a workplace case. And for those, uh, they tend to like to obstruct the fans so that the sound is not like 
directly omitted into your direction, like straight into your face. You know, it, it will act like sort of a, a noise barrier, not like a sound damping thing, but it will change how, how you perceive it and that really helps. And this can be done in a good and in a bad way. We saw the Fantex evolve some time ago. There it was the same thing, but the amount of space they leave on the side for the, for the fans to breathe is actually more than enough, so it will work very, very good in here. And for the N2719, it is pretty much the same concept. The space that they left in between the front panel and the sidebars is plenty enough to let more than enough air through. However, especially compared to the Evolve X, the Anthu got those additional three spots in the bottom and four on the side. And it's because of those that the potential obstruction in the front not being mesh is basically irrelevant. I mean, with that huge 4 120 mm fan spot on the side, where you have close to no obstruction, there is just not a way that you will not be able to push enough air through this case. It, this will work very, very fine. So to sum it up, the airflow is absolutely sufficient. I do not see a scenario where you might come even close to a problem. Oh, and by the way, the feet are also high enough for the air to get sucked in the, in the bottom without a real obstruction. And the case got one of those car bottom spoilers in the back for, for some reason. Now, as the end of this video, let's get to the one thing that gave me kind of a bad impression uh, in the beginning. Quality-wise, the case is built as you might expect it for, for the price. Everything is sturdy, nothing wiggles, nothing will bend or break easily, no problem there. And until now, I haven't met a Fantex case where this was a problem. However, on Fantex cases, I nowadays already have a pretty high quality expectation on the material from the get-go. Take the Evolve X as an example. Everything is made out of metal. That just gives the whole thing like a very high-end feeling. And for the Anthu 719, Fantex also states that basically everything is made out of aluminum, steel and glass. The problem, however, for me is that those bars around the case are made out of plastic. And don't get me wrong, if you would make these out of metal, the case would be so much more expensive and, and, and you, wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to afford it. However, due to the plasticky feeling of those bars, and, and that's an important one, the ridiculous thickness of the paint put on those panels on the front and on the top that, that Fantex just calls faceplates, I was under the impression from the very beginning of, of the whole review section that the whole exterior of the case was plastic. And that did not sit very well with me. For the B-rolls, build, and all the other tries, I had the, the feeling of cheap and low quality feeling going, and, and that just wasn't good. It took until the writing the script, so until I was sure that I had all the necessary B-rolls and all, that I cut a corner of, of those plates in the top. And look at that, underneath a way too thick layer of paint hides something that seems to be an extremely thin layer of aluminum, or at least metal, but probably aluminum. And this was a perfect example for me how the feeling of something changes my perception of it, cause for the majority of the time, I was under the impression that the front and the top panel are made out of too finicky material considering the level at, at which this case comes in. However, as it turns out, it is not the case. The central piece is aluminum and the front is also aluminum and it's just the bars around that are made out of plastic. But cause the bars are made out of plastic, it gave me a perception that the center is also plastic, resulting in me having a bad feeling about the whole panel and thus kind of the whole case. And do not think that I want to blame Fantech for producing something bad here. They did a very, very good job and the quality is extremely high on this one. I just want to point out that there are probably people going through the same thing. Like, the, the mind path for me, plastic border, plastic center, plastic case, too expensive for a plastic case, not a good case. Exactly that, like, mindset is kind of sad considering how well this case is built. And this can be perfectly compared to something like an Evolve X, where it's obvious from far away that the whole thing is made out of freaking metal, and if you would put it next to the 719, the Evolve X would immediately be believed to be a better case, in my opinion, while it is not really the case. So where does this leave us? Well, even with the perception of a plastic front, I would still give this case my highest recommendations. If you are looking for something that, with a real ton of space, something that has an amount of cooling potential so big that you will never have to worry about anything in here, 
this is the case for it. In fact, this thing is so much everything, I'm still not sure how to reach this case's limit with, with something that is actually like an usable build. And on the price side, I believe that the case is surprisingly affordable considering the amount of ridiculous features. On Amazon US, it is going for around 220 and here in Europe, I can get it even a bit more affordable at 119 And considering that the Evolve X is quite a bit more expensive, I believe that even in a, in a price to performance ratio, the Anthu is better than the Evolve X. So for those who are looking for probably one of the best like high performance workstation type cases, absolute recommendation from my side. But okay, this should be it for the monster of that Fantex calls Anthu 719. This thing is so freaking ridiculous. And if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Evolve X. Design-wise, it is still my very favorite. On a side note, we also now have channel memberships, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. And additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the whole thing here afloat, but it will also serve to finally find a way to reach the 719's limit, that there has to be a limit. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.